to them, General Crises and Civilization, you know, which is just an attractive title. Now, uh, somebody called me up and wanted to talk to me at this. And I think it was at this. And he said his name was Larson, and he was a, a scientist from Brigham Young, and he wanted to see and talk to me because of what was going on up there. I said, well, what is going on up there? Well, he says they have mass meetings on this, and he says it's just an uproar all the time. And I didn't know. Now, he made an interview with me, and he wanted to play it on the campus radio or the local radio station, and I said, all right. What was the interview about? About... Just about this, this, yeah, no, about uh, the uh, oh, okay. Okay. controversy. Okay. And I said, all right, let me know what happens. But he never wrote to me. I never found out. Mm. I never made any effort. So I don't know whether it was ever broadcast or not. What was your, what, why, what was your input in that? What did you have to say about the Scusins controversy? Well, I, I simply said, I, t I simply told him that Scusins wrote this book. He never uh, he talked, to, you he about talked to me about it. He violated my copyright. It's full of lies and things that are untrue. It takes things out of context and misinterprets them. And I gave him the specific things where I disagree. The group that I'm writing about was originally, in my mind, the group established secretly by Lord Milner in 1908 and 99 called the Round Table Group, which still publishes a quarterly magazine called the Round Table in London, which is one of the world's best sources of international relations information since 1910. The first editor of it was Lord Lothian, at that time Philip Carr, K-E-R-R, and uh, nobody knew this really for years. I got to know things, and I investigated that group. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Now, how I found it is very interesting. I noticed that prominent people in English life had fellow of All Souls College, uh, Lord Halifax, who was the uh, Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, and then they made him ambassador to America. When they take the Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, and makes him ambassador to Washington, which most people would consider a downward step. It shows how important they considered Washington's support would be in World War II, you see. Mm -hmm. right, he's a fellow of all souls. The fellow who summoned Neville Ch uh, Chamberlain in the 10th of May, 1940, and said, for God's sake, go, was uh, Leo Amory. All right, he was a sidekick, the chief lieutenant, political lieutenant of Lord Milner. You see, mm -hmm. he was a fellow of all souls. And so I decided I would study all souls. This is purely historical. Right. I got the names of all people who had been fellows of all souls since 1899 to whenever I was doing it, which would be about 1947. And there were 149 of them. I discovered most of them were fellows for only seven years, which is the, the regular appointment. It's for seven years. But some of them were for 55 years, fellows of all sorts. A man named Dougal Malcolm, who was the head of the British South Africa Company, which is what Rhodesia, you see. And he was for 55 years. I discovered that Lord Brand, who had been with Miller in South Africa, was for years. And he was the head of Lazar Brothers bankers in London, and I discovered that Leo Amory was for years, and so forth. And above all, I discovered a man named Lionel Curtis who had no right whatever to be a fellow of all souls. You get to be a fellow of all souls either because you are a very prominent person, and as an honorary thing, you will become an honorary fellow for seven years, or because you are an outstanding scholar, and you get it by competitive examination when you graduate. That's how Lord Halifax got it. His name was uh, Charles Wood in 1903. When he graduated from uh, Oxford, he took a competitive examination and got it. But he's kept it. Now, I discovered he kept it because he went immediately to South Africa and met the kindergarten, which was the group of people that were running South Africa for Lord Milner, you see. They were called kindergarten because they were all young kids, mm -hmm. you see. Now, these are the ones who remain forever after, fellows of all souls, or in Lionel Curtis's case, he's the man who said, we've got to change the name from British Empire to Commonwealth of Nations. And the reason is they had been students of Alfred Zimmern, who wrote a book in 1909 called The Greek Commonwealth, describing ancient Greece, you see? Mm -hmm. And who was the man who made Arnold Toynbee 
a great classical scholar, do you see, and brought it into international affairs. Now, I knew none of this. Mm -hmm. All I knew is that here, were, here was a fellow, Lionel Curtis, who was such a poor student, it took him 15 years to get his degree, and then he got it about the lowest pass degree or something that you could ever get. Mm -hmm. and, and, he, wasn't and nobody knew it. Company. Nobody had ever heard of him. Right. But he was Furthermore, in the company. I later discovered, furthermore, he was Lord Halifax's roommate at All Souls for years. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered this fella is behind everything that's going on. My own Curtis, do you see? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think we should talk too much about this. Well, no, I... Do you see? Right. All right. All right. But having discovered that, I met Alfred Zimmerman. He came here to give a speech. And I said, isn't it funny that, that All Souls, he's that's the round table group. I had never heard of them. That shows how little I knew it. They've been around since 1909 and published this magazine since 1910, and this is 1947. Mm -hmm. And I said, what does the round table group? He named them, who they were. And he says, I was a member of them for 10 years, from 1913, and they, they added, they brought me in and invited me because I was in the Workers' Education Alliance. This was extension programs, night courses, summer courses for workers, Workers' Education Alliance. And he said, uh, that's why they brought me into it, and I was for 10 years, and he says, I resigned in 1923 because they were determined to build up Germany against France. He says, I wouldn't stand for it, so I resigned. Now, when I met Lord Brand later and asked him, about this, he had never seen the letter of resignation. Now, and so I better stop talking because you see, this gets into okay. all kinds of things. Now, this is I knew the Round Table Group was very influential, I knew that they were the real founders of the Royal Institute of International Affairs, and I knew they were the, all the stuff that's in print that they were the real founders of the Institute of Pacific Relations. I knew that they were the godfathers of the uh, Council of Foreign Relations here. Mm -hmm. I knew that, for example, you know the big study of history, many volumes of uh, Arnold Toynbee? Mm -hmm. All right. I knew the manuscripts of that were stored in the Council of Foreign Relations during the war so they wouldn't be destroyed by German bombing, do you see? Mm -hmm. And so forth. And so forth. So I began to put these things together and discovered that this group was working for the following things. They were a secret group. They were working to federate the English-speaking world, mm -hmm. the English-speaking world. Mm -hmm. They were closely linked to international bankers. Uh, they were working to establish a world, what I call a three-power world. And that three-power world was the Atlantic bloc of England and the Commonwealth and the United States, Germany, Hitler's Germany, Soviet Russia, the three power world. They said Germany we can control because it's boxed in, and all of this is in my book. Mm -hmm. It's boxed in between the Atlantic bloc and the Russians. The Russians will behave because they're boxed in between the Atlantic bloc, the American Navy, and Singapore, and so forth, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the Germans. Do you see? Right. And therefore, now this is all described in my book, and this was their idea. Now notice, it's a balance of power system. Mm. It's essentially what Kissinger, although well, he doesn't know what he's doing, he's bundling everything. Because mm. he's just a prima donna, you know, uh, uh, emotionally unbalanced uh, person. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing, but it was a good idea. And what he should have been doing is described by me, and you really should read this, in current history for October 1968. Now, if I had a copy, I'd give it to you, but I don't have it. It is how to construct a multi-block world in which the United States would be secure, as we ever can be, and be independent and have freedom of action. Do you see? But he's blowing it in one way and another. And the whole thing's going to explode in space, I'm afraid. And I hope to God it doesn't, because we can't afford, you know, another mess like this, these incompetence. Now, uh, what is said in here is that these people are for world domination. And the, two, and the group I'm talking about were not. Uh -huh. They were largely, partly financed, for instance, by the, uh, by Rhodes, the Rhodes Trust, and the how.